go ahead and put your questions in the chat room. We have a system in place where I'll be able to receive those questions and ask our speaker. And we'll do that with our panels later on as well. Our next speaker provides county-based technical assistance for the Kansas Stepping Up Technical Assistance Center, collaboratively supporting and assisting systems, system improvement projects. Previously, she served as the Behavioral Health Supervisor for Horizons Mental Health Center in the Reno County Correctional Facility, providing direct client care and advocacy to people experiencing mental illness and co-occurring use disorders and assisting with re-entry services. Now, Audra Goldsmith now works on a national level as a senior policy analyst with Stepping Up, working in conjunction with the Council of State Government Justice Center. But I will tell you, she is originally a Kansan. She has received degrees from Wichita State and Emporia State. Now, I've had a million Zoom meetings with Audra, and today is the first day I've met Audra in person. So I'm very excited to introduce our next speaker. And I will tell you, one of the questions we got when we were planning this summit was, Am I going to get something tangible? Am I going to get a resource? Am I going to get something that's going to help me in my community, in my county, in my jurisdiction? The answer to that is yes, but one of the first wonderful examples of that is the Stepping Up Initiative. So without any further delay, please welcome to the stage, Audra Goldsmith. Good morning. I think Judge Winnell put the joke on me to speak right before lunch, and I hate to keep people from their lunch hour, so I will be swift and brief, um, also so we can have time for uh, a Q&A at the end. Um, thank you, Judge Winnell, and also Patty Tobias with NCSC uh, and others who planned this event um, for including Stepping Up and the Kansas Stepping Up Technical Assistance Center. I am very honored to accompany such an accomplished and knowledgeable list of of presenters and panelists, um, but even more, I'm very honored to have the opportunity to speak with all of you um, and to meet some of you for the very first time in person. Um, as I've been in this position for uh, a little over a year and most of my, all of my meetings have been all virtual, so it's very nice to actually see people in their true form uh, in person. So for those of you who know me um, from my previous work, uh, bettering the competency to stand trial process is something I'm extremely passionate about. I'm very grateful to be in the position that I am today to be able to provide assistance to those working on this process, on this process in your own jurisdictions um, and provide guidance along the capacity that is stepping up. Um, as Judge Winnell mentioned, I am a senior policy analyst for the Council of State Governments Justice Center, and I solely work on the project of the Kansas Stepping Up Technical Assistance Center. Um, as he also did mention, I used to be the clinician at the Reno County Correctional Facility in Hutchinson, um, where I served in the jail for two years, but with the um, Horizons Mental Health Center for five. Um, and within the multitude of duties I had while serving at the jail, um, I also did complete uh, what you may know as the, the KSA 22-3302 assessments um, for those whose competency is in question. And so from this experience really grew my passion for bettering this process. Um, as often I was experiencing firsthand the frustration um, and the concerns that I was seeing on a daily basis with my clients that I was dealing with in the jail. Just a very quick review of the agenda we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> I know that there's probably a, a um, varied familiarity with the Justice Center and Stepping Up, um, so we'll spend a little bit of time discussing the Stepping Up initiative and then dive into some data that I've collected from various counties across the state um, that show the overrepresentation of those living with a severe mental illness in our county jails. I am gonna provide a couple of uh, examples of what a few other states across the nation have done to start working on this issue. Um, and then discuss specifically what the Kansas Stepping Up Technical Assistance Center does for the state. I am not here today, I would like to clarify, to tell you how this process should be changed or how I would envision it as a clinician, how I would envision it being better in the future. 
But what I am here to offer you is the support and assistance that you might need when you take what you learn from these next two days back to your own communities and back to your own homes. I hope that I will be one of the many points of contact that you might utilize um, as you work with your other leaders, stakeholders, mental health providers, law enforcement, et cetera, as you work on this issue in your community. All right, so for those of you not familiar, the CSD Justice Center develops research-driven strategies to include public safety and strengthen communities. Uh, we have a long history of working in the state of Kansas. Uh, we are on our third justice reinvestment effort in the state of Kansas. Um, we also work with uh, various grant recipients of the Justice Mental Health Collaboration Program and the Second Chance Act grantees. Um, and Chief Gordon Ramsey, formerly of the Wichita uh, Police Department, also sits on our Justice Center um, board. So Stepping Up is a national initiative to reduce the number of people with mental illness and co-occurring substance use disorders in local justice systems. In May of this year, we will actually be around for seven years. Um, we span across 45 states in the nation and have over 540 uh, counties that have passed a Stepping Up resolution. There are 37 innovator counties, and we'll touch on what that is here uh, in just a little bit. In Kansas, those counties include Johnson County, Douglas County, Reno, and Shawnee County. And Kansas joins um, five other states that launched a statewide initiative, including Pennsylvania, Ohio, Alabama, and California. Um, but Kansas is only the second to have its very own technical assistance center within Stepping Up. So what is stepping up and how do we help county leaders start to make a difference? These are our six foundational questions that we have that we address to county leaders when they want to start working on this issue. As I said, we're in that national effort to reduce mental illness with co-occurring substance use disorders in the jails. And so the idea is to create a cross systems collaborative team that utilizes data to understand their target population identify effective policies and strategies, and then be able to track their progress. So when we start to work with counties, we will ask them, who is at your table? Who are the leaders in your community that have a passion for this work, but also have the effect to be able to make change in your community? Do you collect data? Do you go back and reanalyze the processes and the strategies and the services you have implemented or would like to implement to make sure they're being efficient enough? Are we getting the outcomes we want to? These are things that we work on individually um, at a county level. When we talk about data, um, these are the four key measures that we really uh, recommend counties and jails look at when they want to start figuring out how big is this issue really? And how do I start tracking it to make a difference? So we look at things like reducing the number of folks in our jails um, that identify as having a mental illness, shortening that length of stay, increasing their ability to be connected to treatment services when they're released from jail, and then hoping to really lower that rebooking and that recidivism due to all of these efforts uh, that we've put into place. So I do want to take a minute to talk about um, the issue that uh, Judge Leifman and um, our government officials did touch on and provide you know, very extensive statistics when it comes to how big this population and how big this problem really is in our nation. Um, these results are from 2018 National Survey on Drug Use and Health done by the Center for Behavioral Health Statistics and Quality. In the general population, we have 4% of people that identify as having a mental illness. In our jail population, we have 17% of people that identify as having a mental health illness. That's already larger than what our general population sees. Within that 17%, 72% have co-occurring use disorders, substance use disorders. So I wanna take a second to look at data that I've um, been so lucky to receive from a few of our county jails that collect uh, different data points on this specific topic. Um, 
as you look at these data pieces, please, uh, please note that it's a snapshot of a day. So a day within the Douglas County Jail back in August um, on the 24th, you can see some of the statistics that they provided. They had 36 inmates who were identified as having a mental health concern, which was 23% of their total population of 158 inmates for that day. Now, historically, Douglas County does very fantastic work with their Stepping Up initiative, um, and they significantly reduced their prevalence rate, uh, but it did go back up during COVID. And that in of itself tells its own story of how COVID affected this population. I have heard from various jails um, that this was also true for them. Facility census uh, was astronomically lower during the peak months of COVID, uh, but the mental health population remained steady. These folks remained in jail. And that only drove up the percentage of, that, of those we had in jail versus the identified population that was not severely mentally ill in the jail. So on this same day in August, um, those 36 inmates who identified as having a mental health concern, 67% of them were in jail on pretrial services. So they have the ability in Douglas County to break down um, exactly what types of reasons people are being held in the jail. So why is this happening? Why are we seeing some of these really astronomical numbers um, when it comes to our mental health population? Well, there, there are all sorts of reasons people wind up in jail, right? There's not one specific reason. Um, so jail data is a catch-all. And if you think data-wise, um, it identifies the limitations and challenges our community citizens are facing that attribute to their involvement in the justice system. Jail data is a strong piece that can be used to advocate for changes not only in the jail, but also in the community. Having a collaborative partnership with others in the community gives you the power to speak to the problem, even if the solution does not lie within you. But you can use that to ignite change. Maybe that involves a change in the arrest policies, court proceedings, a change in the community corrections department, et cetera. Uh, remember in the previous slide with the national survey reporting the average SMI population at 17%. I went and checked uh, the very beautiful data dashboards provided by Douglas and Johnson County uh, on Monday. And on Monday in Douglas County, they had 25% of their total jail population identified as having a serious mental illness. In Johnson County, their data dashboard on Monday noted 30% of their jail population identified as having a serious mental illness. It's through this data that we really start to see how prevalent this issue is in our Kansas jails. Here are some data points from the Shawnee County Jail. On August 27th of last year, 164 out of 536 identified as having a mental health concern. So you can also see that the population identified as having a, a serious mental illness concern um, was jailed notably longer. 276 days versus the non-SMI population at only 137 days. So when you have access to this data, you are more knowledgeable when you are speaking of who is in your jail. One of the data points could also be um, looked at for who is being held in our jail on competency. We could almost conclude that the high um, average length of stay that Shawnee County Jail is seeing, we would assume that they would have folks in their jail who have been there for extremely long periods of time, potentially waiting on going and having competency restoration services being done. So we see these average length of stay numbers really skyrocket when we are including those folks of SMI in our jails that are also st stuck in this competency to stand trial process. We all know that being incarcerated is very detrimental on the folks experiencing mental illness and even those who are not. We could all agree that it costs more for folks to be housed in our jail who identifies having a mental health concern. 
whether that's due to the longer average length of stay, um, the more dollars spent on very expensive mental health medications or transportation to and from a crisis hospital for crisis stabilization. Uh, this population can carry significant mental decline due to the lack of resources and services offered in jail. And we also know that incarceration separates people from their supports, whether that be family, SUD treatment, mental health treatment, um, housing, employment, whatever their main support may be. Data gives us a concrete, tangible fact to look at when we really want to know how big this issue is in our local county jails. If we're seeing this issue going on in the jails, you could also conclude that judges, prosecutors, attorneys, your mental health providers in your jails are also having this issue being confounded in their caseloads. We're having more of these folks last longer on caseloads within the justice system and not getting the specific treatment and services that they might need um, while they're in the jail. So in August of 2021, there was a leading reform report written by the National Center for State Courts um, in collaboration with the Council of State Governments Justice Center uh, that highlighted 10 recommendations for competency to stand trial systems. The 10th recommendation discussed the development of robust community-based treatment services and support for diversion and reentry. This support also, report also discussed the high need for the partnership between the court system, the mental health providers, law enforcement, and treatment providers for collaborative solutions and positive outcomes. The Stepping Up Initiative helps to assist counties with this last bullet that you see here. Developing robust community-based treatment supports for diversion. We help provide frameworks while utilizing data to identify effective policies and strategies that would best benefit your county's needs with their uniqueness and help them to be able to attract to track the progress over time. So I want um, to give you a little bit of a picture. There is a parable uh, of a blind man and elephant um, back from ancient India. And in this story, there's a group of blind men who have never come across an elephant before and are asked to learn and imagine what this elephant is by just touching it. So each blind man feels a very different part of this elephant's body um, and only one part. So the tusk, uh, maybe the stomach area, whichever. And then they start to describe this elephant based on their limited experience and their descriptions of the elephant are very different from each other. And in some versions, they even start to think that the other person is being dishonest um, and come to blows with each other. We're not ever going to get to that point though. But the moral of this parable is that humans have a tendency to claim absolute truth based on their very limited experience. They're very subjective and limited experience. They ignore other people's limited subjective experiences, which may be equally as true. And I bring that up to say, we all play different parts in this process. We all play different parts when it comes to the process of the criminal justice system and the behavioral health systems. And we all have our unique experiences um, and we all have our own subjective ideas and thoughts. But until we come together in a collaborative approach, having positive change, sustainable change in the future is not going to be something that we will get to very easily. I really wanna um, compliment Kansas. I know I'm a Kansan and from here, but as Judge Winnell said, I, I do work for a national nonprofit agency. Um, Kansas really does great work and has been featured um, in different webinars and things that the CSG Justice Center puts out on their thoughts and ideas and their progress that they're trying to make on this issue. So I really wanna commend everybody in this room for being here um, and, and really trying to look at this issue. I want to provide quickly a few examples um, of what a few other states have done. 
Uh, this is a Texas toolkit for right sizing competency restoration services. Um, you can see up here it says judges and court staff, but they provide recommendations uh, for community mental health providers, for corrections, for attorneys, for prosecutors, um, as well as mental health providers within this very same toolkit. Um, and I wanted to just uh, read a quote very quickly um, that I think spoke very eloquently of a judge's role when it comes to the competency process, but also just the criminal process and the behavioral health intersection in general. It says, judges play an essential role in helping eliminate the weight for competency restoration services by leading and facilitating the collaborative of parties. Courts can connect people with the appropriate mental health and treatment services. Furthermore, judges ensure the legal system is more just, compassionate, and fair by promoting practices that help those with mental illness and intellectual and developmental disabilities receive the necessary treatment to prevent recidivism, thus balancing community needs and judicial economy. I won't go over all of these, but these are a few of the recommendations specifically in that judges uh, section that came out of this toolkit in Texas. And this is some uh, also recommendations that came out of a work group in California. And again, please note that these are not recommendations I think we should be considering. Um, I'm simply providing a few examples of work being done in other states regarding this issue. Um, I'm a very firm believer in not reinventing the wheel, um, but utilizing your connections, resources, and consultation with other states could be of, of benefit um, as we as leaders have discussions in making a positive and impactful change to this process. So where it's possible, the best way to reduce recidivism with your uh, population of SMI in jails is to have a diversion service. And this graph shows um, a few client-centered diversion opportunities provided by local behavioral health systems, providing community-based uh, services and supports. The graph provides county leaders examples of frameworks each county can lead in response to behavioral health diversion services, and where that intercept is in those community-wide uh, supports. So for example, Law enforcement could lead diversion efforts when it comes to that initial contact this population has with law enforcement. As well as court-based services could lead the efforts on discussing any type of specialty courts that might be appropriate within their county. So communities can approach service implementation in a collaborative effort, uplifting those that best address the needs more effectively and focus their resources on the, res on the services that they have chosen. So as I mentioned, Stepping Up falls into that 10th recommendation from the Leading Reform Report. Um, the initiative provides frameworks to counties as they work on these ancillary supports in order to divert folks from the, the justice system, um, such as reentry case management services, implementation of a jail liaison, and community and crisis response programs. So what does it really take? These are some um, recommendations provided by the Council of State Governments Justice Center as requested by the National Judicial Task Force to examine state courts and response to mental illness. Again, I'm not gonna read through all of these because I'm not holding up you in your lunch time. Um, you can get these on the slides that are online. Um, but these are very good things for you to start discussing, um, and resources are already out there for you. Uh, so you don't have to go and reinvent the wheel when you start thinking about what low-hanging fruit or very big goals you want to start to try to accomplish in your county. Stepping Up provides counties with guidelines on planning processes via the, the Stepping Up Six Foundational Questions we viewed earlier as well as baseline data and progress through these four key measures. The planning process that includes efforts to identify high impact strategies and implement those or scale them up. So you can see maybe on bullet four, when we look at reducing recidivism, things we can look at are having specialized probation 
or look at having um, really good risk needs assessments being done so that we are uh, giving these people good access to the treatment and the services that they do actually need. This is a helpful resource provided by uh, CSG that includes a checklist for the criminal justice and behavioral health partnerships. This information can guide decision making for criminal justice and behavioral health partners um, built to help minimize justice involvement with people with mental illnesses and substance use disorders and pinpoint where to target resources and interventions. This is another resource um, that was recently put out by the Justice Center um, in partnership with very other organizations and agencies. And they do note some statistics on the competency to stand trial process within this report. They noted an estimated of um, 91,000 competency evaluations done per year. And 50% of those are done on misdemeanor cases. There has been an increase in over 70% in the use of state hospitals for the competency to stand trial patients from 1999 to 2014. So it gives you some really good information on background and what we're viewing um, now in the nation with this competency process. It, it also highlights 10 strategies towards a vision of better approach on competency, um, which also include a robust community-based treatment supports, as well as a limited use of the competency to stand trial process when appropriate, um, and also talking about ways to improve um, and make it equal among all users and very efficient for those for people who uh, do remain in the competency to stand trial system. This is just a, a quick graph to show the similarities of these two um, very well known and respected reports and the recommendations that they put out do complement each other extremely well. Um, and you can find links to those, I do believe, um, online with the summit resources. So very quickly, I'm gonna go over um, the Kansas Stepping Up Technical Assistance Center. Um, this did come about as part of the uh, KDADS um, Justice and Mental Health Plan through the coordination of the Governor's Behavioral Health and Services Planning Council, as well as the Mental Health and Jails Work Group. Um, KDADS has been working uh, very intently with local behavioral health and law enforcement leaders and launched the Kansas TA Center um, last February in 2021. So the overarching goal of the TA Center is really to position counties to have accurate baseline data on the number of people with illnesses, with mental illnesses in jail and develop and implement uh, plans based on those county needs that really highlight high impact strategies to scale up or implement and set reduction targets to track progress on reducing the number of SMI populations we're seeing in our jails. So the benefits of Kansas having their own uh, contact person um, is that we really are striving to have uh, intent and intimate one-on-one -on -one trainings with counties throughout the state to figure out what types of services are most realistic for them to implement within their county or enhance if they already have some going and provide step-by-step -step guidelines and those peer connections of this is how this county did it, this is how this state may have done it, so that folks when we're trying to address this issue are not having to reinvent the wheel. I'm really trying to work with counties on enhancing their data collection and analysis to understand the gaps in the policies and practices and be able to help them select and implement these high impact strategies that are going to safely divert those living with a severe mental illness out of our justice system. As I said, we meet counties where they are at. Stepping up is not a uh, one size fits all approach. Uh, we provide and encourage counties to find strategies and policies that work the best for them um, when they're trying to achieve their specific and unique goals in their county. And I will end on this. We make sure to have um, time for Q&A, but as far as the Kansas um, Technical 
assistance center and work and progress we've made thus far with the TA center. Um, we did start off with eight counties, stepping up counties before the launch of the TA center, and we are now up to 13. Um, we started out with three innovator counties and we are now up to four. Um, and it might not seem like the numbers have jumped much, but when you can imagine the type of work the collaborative cross systems work that's really being done in these counties, um, those numbers really do mean something significant. Um, and, and when I say I compliment and commend the work that's being done in Kansas, it's because I see it and we talk about it every single day. Um, so thank you so much for letting me close out here before before lunch, and I want to, um, on behalf of the Justice Center and Stepping Up and the Kansas TA Center, uh, I want to extend my, my invitation to um, work with each of you individually in your counties to figure out how we can better um, this initiative, but overall this, this process um, and this issue of the overpopulation of mental health um, living in our justice system. Thank you. Now we are, all right. <laughs> so thank you, Audra. Um, and Audra wants to get you to your lunch. I do not, <laughs> because I am uh, submitting to the CLE Commission's authority, and so we've got some time for question and answers. If you are watching online, please submit your Zoom, please submit your questions in the chat room via Zoom. I am already receiving them now. Uh, I will get to them in a second. But I want, to, um, I want to open up to the room first. If you have a, a question, raise your hand, I will come to you. I would ask that you identify who you are, ask the question, and then we'll ask Audra to answer. I will say, though, on the last slide, and it, it doesn't have to go back up on the screen, but you saw that the county's total was 13. We have 105 counties in Kansas. Audra is a Kansan. She likes to work hard. So we can get that up to 105 if you just reach out to Audra. Uh, if you're in a county that doesn't have uh, a connection yet with stepping up and data-driven, evidence-based um, performance, please reach out to Audra. Not right now, because we have questions and answers. So I believe I'll start with you. What is your name and title, young lady? Young lady, I'm older than you are. Uh, <laughs> Melissa Standridge, and I am a justice on the Kansas Supreme Court. And I have a question in talking about accurate baseline data and SMI, severely mentally ill, are those numbers reflective of individuals who have self-identified as having a behavioral or mental illness, or is it jailer identified? So according to the stepping up recommendations, we really try to um, encourage jails to have a validated screening tool at booking. Um, that way they can accurately identify folks that might have a severe mental illness in jail. Um, when we start to collect that information and, and identify that target population, those folks either within the jail or when they get out of jail will hopefully be referred on to um, full assessments, clinical assessments that they can then have further look into diagnoses and specific treatment recommendations. Um, but the validated screening tool itself can be done by uh, a deputy that's booking the person when they come into jail. Um, it can be done by any lay person so it doesn't have to be any special clinical licensure to, to be able to perform that assessment. Thank you, Judge. Our first question from our Zoom attendees is, could we get, maybe not listed now, but it, would there be a resource available where we could get the counties that uh, have passed a stepping up resolution, the 13 counties, could we know through the materials or in the chat room, could we know who those 13 counties are? It was a question from a Zoom, a Zoom participant. Put me on the spot with this one, absolutely. Um, you don't have that to list them right now. <laughs> that information should be provided on the, uh, the steppinguptogether.org website to see all of the stepping up counties, not only in Kansas, but across the nation. All right, and I believe you had a question. Patty Mackey Dick, Hi, uh, district judge from Hutchinson, and I've known Audra for a long time. <laughs> <clears throat> this is my question, and it really just dovetails what Justice Standridge asked. So of those three dashboards that were presented, 
the information to de to determine someone is SMI isn't necessarily the same at those places. So with that specific information uh, from Shawnee County that I showed today, they hadn't implemented a validated screening tool at booking. It was being done by mental health providers in the jail. They do now have a validated screening tool at booking. So when we start to compare jails that do that type of screening, um, it does speak the same language. Okay. The other question that I have is my understanding is, at least from Judge Picorni, that in court, in mental health court, mm -hmm. the qualifications are persistent and severe mental illness, uh, the exact same things that would fall under a care and treatment kind of case. Yes. And a screening isn't going to determine that. So right. then I'm just curious how we determine who would actually qualify. Right. So according if, to the validated screening tool that's per, that we recommend providing at booking, those are going to basically rave, raise a red flag that there is a potential serious mental health um, concern or they have identified a serious mental health concern that thus needs to have further um, assessment being done. So when it gets to your bench and you're looking at um, specific cases, those most of the time have probably had some sort of a clinical assessment being done, um, being able to identify as severe mental illness or SPMI according to the DSM-5. You just said you had a follow-up. All right, okay. So we, have have, uh, we do have another question from a Zoom participant. Has there been any recent steps towards forwarding the expansion of the focus of stepping up to juveniles? There is discussion um, within the stepping up initiative that is uh, an extremely large undertaking, um, although would be extremely beneficial. Um, it is in conversation, but it's nothing that is currently in the works. All right, and I am going to turn the microphone over to Representative Landweir, but if you do have some questions in the back, go ahead and raise your hand, and I, will, I see we've got one over here, but let me know. We have a few minutes for a few more questions. Uh, Representative Landweir. State Representative Brenda Landweir from Wichita. My question is, is how does this relate into helping states, or yeah, on the state level, for us to look at solutions? I know that each county is unique and the community is unique, I get that, but how does that help us on solutions? Sure. So as far as um, the Kansas Stepping Up Technical Assistance Center, um, the position that I hold, part of my job is to take themes, um, concerns that I'm hearing across the board from counties I'm working with in the state and lift those up to um, state leaders. So I also sit on the um, JIA committee, the Justice Involved Youth and an Adult Subcommittee of the Governor's Behavioral Planning Council, um, and also the Rural and Frontier um, Subcommittee. So I try to take those uh, issues and concerns that I'm seeing back to state officials and people um, who make recommendations to legislation so that we can continue to have conversations and, and, and try to make changes up at a state level. Um, that's via the TA Center. Um, stepping up, we work with uh, multiple different agencies and also have our justice reinvestment team um, that works in Kansas. And so I also partner with them on providing them those recommendations that I'm seeing, concerns, um, reports that I'm seeing across the state so that they can on their end, when we're talking about justice reinvestment, take information that I'm learning um, as I do this work across the state. All right, we have one more question. Hey, Audrey, uh, just a quick uh, maybe statement slash question, but a lot of people in here uh, are probably concerned about financial processes through stepping up and the assessments that would be used in terms of the jail. Uh, I believe most of that is free or stepping up has opportunities that can help. Could you share a little bit about that? Yeah, so the initiative in, in and of itself is um, free. Uh, the TA Center, the Kansas TA Center is uh, being funded via KDADS um, for all of you to have the support that you need. When, when we talk about service implementation and strategies that folks are wanting to implement across their county, um, we are there to just provide guidance and frameworks on best ways and best practices in order to do that. Stepping up alone does not provide um, direct funding. 
Um, but part of what I try to do is uh, let folks know when there is funding opportunities, whether that's from KDADS, from other national resources um, across the US that they might be able to leverage when it comes to supporting or uplifting the programs that they wanna, that they wanna implement in their county. We have another in-person question. Uh, we also have a question from a Zoom participant. Audra, is there any information on the impact of having a robust system of residential crisis community services versus communities without adequate residential services? Sure, absolutely. Um, Johnson County, and I might be misspeaking, but I, there might be also a, a report from Douglas County um, that really highlights the implementation of services that they've provided in the community and how that did have a very um, impactful response to some of these issues that they are seeing in their county. Um, there are also nationwide examples that could be provided. Um, I'd be more than happy to provide links to these reports and or um, connections with folks who have done this work across the nation if they want specific uh, tangible reports that they can read through. Hi, I'm Julie Hi. Torsky. I'm with the uh, Cedric County and through Department of Corrections Parole. I'm a housing specialist, but my question is, um, being from Wichita, we continue to hear about lack of resources in the smaller counties, and so those with SMI or SPMI end up getting sent to the, you know, Topeka, Kansas City, Wichita area. How can we motivate those counties that may not have the resources, you know, the, the ones that aren't that 13 counties or the four counties that you talked about, to actually look at opportunities to open up their communities. They may not even have a mental health professional in the county. So what's out there for those? Well, if anybody has the magic wand for that answer, please give it to me because it'll really help me on a day-to-day -day basis with my work. Um, but really it's knowledge and helping them understand and create even these collaborative relationships that we try to, try to facilitate and promote. Um, a lot of times when we're traveling to these very rural places in Kansas, it may have been a while since um, the mental health center has talked to the sheriff, or it may have been a while since um, corrections has talked to the sheriff or the mental health center. So really getting them around the same table and having the conversations of the issues that they may be seeing. Again, it doesn't mean that there has to be some huge elaborate um, implementation of a very expensive resource. But it can be more of something as simple as coming to the table, signing an MOU that says we can now talk to each other so we can share cases with each other and help to make sure that we're getting the appropriate continuity of care if that person is being released from the jail back into the community. So a lot of it is education. Um, a lot of it is promoting that collaborative uh, relationships within your county uh, leadership. All right, would you please join me in thanking 